AI has changed a lot since I started six years ago. While there are more learning resources available than ever, figuring out where to start is a challenge. In this video, I'll talk about how I'd approach learning AI given what I know now and the tools available today. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Shah. I make videos about data science and entrepreneurship. If you enjoy this content, please consider clicking the subscribe button. That's a great no cost way you can support me in all the videos that I make. I've worked in AI for the past six years. I started as a researcher while getting my PhD, then worked as a data scientist at Toyota, and now I teach people AI while building products on the side. Although I still have a lot to learn, the five-step approach I share here is based on what I've personally found helpful in navigating this space. If I were to boil it all down, the central principle of my approach is to learn by doing, where each step outlines a clear and specific objective through which completion will naturally develop key skills. In other words, rather than reviewing a list of concepts and courses, each step is a task designed to force me to learn key skills by completing it. If starting from zero, the first thing I would do is familiarize myself with modern AI tools like ChatGPT, Claude, or the like. This is important because frequently using these tools will give me a practical understanding of of what these models can do. It'll also develop my ability to use them effectively through prompting alone. On a more meta level, these chat interfaces are amazing tools for learning AI and really anything else. I'd use ChatGPT to explain confusing buzzwords and technical concepts like LLMs, tokens, APIs, RAG, etc. And be sure to ask follow-up questions until I have a clear understanding of each idea. For those that don't don't click, I'd seek alternative resources using Google search and YouTube. Although I could go far with today's no-code AI tools, they are still fundamentally limited. Namely, these tools can easily be used to build custom solutions or process data in bulk. That's why the next thing I would do is install Python on my machine. Python is the industry standard programming language for AI development. To get it installed, I'd ask ChatGPT for step-by-step -step instructions. If I got stuck, I'd go back to ChatGPT, explain the issue, and ask it for guidance. While using ChatGPT or any other AI assistant in this way can significantly streamline this process, I would still take the time to understand each key step of the process and ask follow-up questions as needed. This is an important habit to develop because it'll help avoid accumulating technical debt, which I'd have to pay for later when when something goes wrong. Once I've become comfortable with ChatGPT and installed Python on my machine, my next step would be to build a simple automation using Python. My approach to generating project ideas would be to think of things I consistently use ChatGPT for and try to implement it in Python. This would require me to become familiar with OpenAI's Python API. So I'd start reading through their documentation and reviewing example code there. Once I felt comfortable with the API, I'd start writing Python code. My first step would be to think through each step of my automation. For example, if I wanted to summarize research papers, the steps might be one, read the paper's contents into Python, two, construct a prompt for GPT-40, and three, make an OpenAI API call. If I got stuck, I'd go to ChatGPT for assistance. For instance, if I didn't know how to read PDFs into Python, I would ask ChatGPT for help. If it spits out code that I don't understand, I'd ask follow-up questions until I understood each line. Again, it is important I take this approach to coding with ChatGPT because blindly copy-pasting code wouldn't really teach me much. It would also accrue unforgiving technical debt. In other words, I'd get short-term gains but would have to pay for them later through technical difficulties and headaches. After step three becomes easy for me, I'd seek out more sophisticated sophisticated projects. Rather than making ChatGPT-like API calls, I'd built a project that required me to use an embedding model or train a model myself. For this, I'd use Hugging Faces Transformers library and find a pre-trained model that's relevant to my project on the Hugging Face 
GitHub. Potential project ideas might be things like a semantic search tool, a basic rag chatbot, clustering documents based on similarity, training a text classifier using embeddings, or fine-tuning a large language model. For example, if I went with the RAG project, I'd first educate myself about RAG by watching YouTube videos, then I'd break down my system's basic components and the steps to implement it. Finally, I'd start coding the project using ChatGPT as a co-pilot like in step Three. Although I would have learned a lot about the technical side of AI through doing projects in steps three and four, when it comes to generating value with AI, this is not enough. For that, I need to use what I learned to solve real world problems. There are two ways to do this. I could one, solve my own problems, or two, solve someone else's problems. Since I hopefully already did the former in steps three and four, here are a few ways I'd approach the latter. One, I'd reach out to business owners and professionals in my network. Two, if I was a student, I'd join a research group at my university. Three, I'd look for an internship, again, if I was a student. Or four, I'd find a freelance gig on Upwork. Let's say I'd already graduated college and wasn't quite confident enough to start looking for freelance gigs. That leaves me with option one. For this, I'd start by making a list of people I could reach out to. Ideal contacts would be small business owners or professionals working at small to medium sized businesses. Then I would craft a message template and reach out to everyone on my list through LinkedIn DMs or email. If I struggle to find the right wording, I'd again turn to ChatGPT for help. Although AI involves an interdisciplinary set of technical skills and knowledge, with today's tools and resources, it's never been more accessible. That said, it's important to remember that learning itself is hard. You will get confused, you will get frustrated, and you will wonder why you're putting yourself through this struggle. However, if you are patient and persistent, you will be rewarded with clarity. If you have questions or you want feedback on project ideas, feel free to share them in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for your time and thanks for watching.